their life is not for you. It's to light their own path. So when they take their light and they leave you and on your path, your light should be lighting your way up. Regardless, you should be able to see clearly every single day. And I'm yelling because this is so real. This is so passionate because you have to become your own light. Don't wait for nobody else's light to be yours. You waiting for someone else's light to light your path. This is why we stay stuck. This is why we stay miserable. This is why we stay waiting for love. This is why we stay waiting for light. We stay hurt. We stay depressed. We stay angry. We stay miserable because we are waiting for a light that we are. But we don't want to spark our own light. So we want to wait for someone who's already lit. Come on now. What are we doing? The Bible says you are the lights. You. You are the lights. What are you waiting for? Spark yourself up. Love anyway. Love. Just love. The hell you wait. The hell you afraid of? Love. You can't be hurt from love. Just, just love. Become your light. Because when you are the light, you attract everything to you. The dark and the light. Love. But I don't know who, but what if I'm attracting all these broken people? Why are you so focused on broken people? Why are you so focused on the broken people? I don't focus on broken people, so I don't want to, why are you so focused? Listen, whatever you focus on is where your energy goes. And wherever your energy goes, you create in your mind and you expect it. You start to expect because you have to receive it. Whatever you focus on, your body, your subconscious mind is waiting to receive it to happen. Just like how when I tell you to close your eyes and picture somebody cutting your neck with a knife. Your body was waiting to feel it, so you tense up. Because now you are living in a real moment. When you are looking for darkness, all men are garbage. I saw a video yesterday, I saw a video yesterday. It was ridiculous. Black men don't love their women. Black men don't love black women. Black men, listen, and for that reason, my dear, for that reason, why is why you're gonna be always drawn because your subconscious mind has to prove you right. Your subconscious mind has to prove you right. I need somebody to type that. Why did that girl name come to my mind just now? It's crazy. Well, do I have unfinished business? <laughs> I think I do. Chrome, can you type, your subconscious mind has to prove you right. You have to receive what you create in your mind. You have to receive it in your physical life. Your subconscious mind has to prove you right. If you're walking around this earth, not realizing that you are a magnet, not realizing that you are... I read something yesterday, it says, you don't get what you want, you get what you are. Thank you, thank you. You don't get what you want, you get what you are. Your subconscious mind, whatever is inside must come out. Your subconscious mind has to prove you right. If you're walking the wrong here, <laughs> you're not subconscious. Thank you. If you're walking around here thinking all men are this, all women are this, all men are this, all men are garbage, your subconscious mind has to prove you right. If you're walking around here talking about if I love, I'm going to get hurt. Every time I love, I'm going to hurt. Your subconscious mind has to create a, 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 the equivalence of your thoughts in a physical experience. Your subconscious mind. Me and Crone had this talk. I'm going to, oh man, I'm going to go into it. Should I go into it, Crone? Should I go into it, Crone? Should I go into it? I know, I know you was. Should I go into it, Crown? Woo! I feel so good today. I, I went for a walk three miles. My legs feel funny, but I feel so good. Lord, I feel good. Lord, my frequency just raised. If you ain't raising your frequency with me, if your frequency just didn't increase, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're listening to. If you ain't, if you're hearing my voice and your frequency, if you don't feel good right now, I don't know what's wrong with you. If you don't feel blessed and feel honored and feel grateful, I don't know what's wrong with you. Something is going on. Something is blocking you from this message. Let me tell you this. This is real. If your frequency just is in a skyrocket, I don't know what you're looking at me for. You just looking at me to judge me. Because if you're judging me, you won't get it. If you have hate and doubt, you won't get it. Just, 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 just go with me. Just uh, increase with me real quick. Increase with me. Increase with me. Oh, I feel good. Listen, the Bible was speaking about the subconscious. <laughs> yeah, right, sister? The Bible was talking about your subconscious and your conscious mind. Everybody back in the days understood that your subconscious mind was a woman. It was your wife. I care was good. Everyone back in the days, even Paul, knew that your subconscious mind was like your wife. 
The conscious mind was like the husband. Subconscious mind is your wife. Paul said, husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. Your subconscious mind is a woman. Your subconscious mind has to submit to the conscious mind, to you. The subconscious mind has to submit. Whatever you think, the subconscious mind being the wife, the woman, the feminine energy, that subconscious mind has to take on the impression of the man. It has to take on the impression and create life. Therefore, whatever you think and you impress the subconscious mind with, the subconscious mind is creating a reality. This is why the subconscious must be the woman. When two, listen, and you shall be one flesh. That's the one flesh. Do you think that we can be one flesh? Flesh is not even ours. It's the one flesh is you. The one flesh is you. The one flesh is you. The hardest thing is to align your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. Therefore, husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. Subconscious mind, submit to your husband so that whatever he thinks, he creates, he brings. I mean, she brings into a physical existence. You all think that it was a... See, when you put things in a physical aspect, you, you cannot understand you can't get it. You will never understand it because you're looking at matter. Dense matter. A matter cannot change matter. But energy could change energy. I want us to understand that. The reason why you can't lose weight is because your subconscious mind is not submitting to your conscious mind. The reason why you can't stop drinking or stop smoking or stop lying or stop cheating is because your subconscious mind is not submitting to that conscious mind. The conscious mind is saying, I want to lose weight. The subconscious mind is saying, no, oh, player, I ain't doing that crap. You said that last week, I ain't, I ain't messing with you. There's no submitting going on. It shall be one flesh. You are that flesh. When we get married, a man shall leave and become one flesh with his wife. Subconscious mind. And they shall live happily ever after. But that's the hardest thing to do. You think that you cannot be one with yourself, but you can be one with someone else? The hardest thing is to be one with yourself. And here you are, looking for a marriage of two dense life form, physicalness, thinking that one day, you're going to be one. While you are still waiting to be one with yourself. This is why when we get in a relationship, we get lost. We don't know what the hell is going on. We become confused because the oneness that we are supposed to be, we are not. Pleasure, thank you for the gift, girl. How are you doing? I'm telling you, your subconscious mind refused to submit because your mind is weak. Your conscious mind is weak. She's saying you're not ready. You're not ready for this. We have all these thoughts in our mind. The woman got to submit to the man. And the, how the woman submit? See, but when love is present with the man. <laughs> when love, oh my God. You all know I'm going, you all, you see, you all could, you see, you all already thinking, damn, that. I bet what he's about to say is going to be deep. I bet, you, I bet what he's about to say. See, but when love is present with the man, the subconscious mind is like, hey, what you want? What you want me to do? I would bring anything that you want into this life. What you want? This is why a woman don't submit to a man. Like Crone said, the woman submit to love. It's not the man. The man is just a physical being. Stop being ridiculous. I'm married, so I have to submit to my husband. You submit to love because love will never leave you. Stop being ridiculous. When, you, when the man consciously has love, that subconscious mind submits because now the trust is built. Love has the stronger force. So now whatever it impresses on the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind does not question. It brings into a fruition. It brings into a physical. Because remember I tell you that the subconscious mind, remember I tell you that love 
connects to everything. Women need love. That's why he said love your wife. Because she needs the love. Because when, she, when the love is triggered on her, when the love is pouring on her, when the love, when she recognizes that love, she do anything. She does anything. Love is the bond. Listen. Come on, come on, come on. It's love. It's only love. It's always going to be love. Love is the only thing. A woman, you, you cannot submit. Hey, mama. You, you cannot submit to anything that's not love. Woman, if you submit to a man without love, you, don't, you just lost. You confused. Right? Right, mama? Say love. Yeah. Say love. Yeah. Say submit to love. Yeah. Say submit yeah. to love. To love. That's it. Say submit. Say it. Say submit. Submit to love. To love. Not a man. Say not man. Not man. That's fa that that that's facts. See, when the man has love, and the man is love, that's when you submit. We all fighting. We all we hear men talking about my wife don't submit to me. My wife, what you want someone to submit to you for, dude? If you have love, you don't need to force it. There is no force in anything when you have love, because love is the bond. Like like my brother said, love is the bond that put everything together. It connects everything. There is no effort when a woman experiences love. There is no effort needed. She relinquished because love is her guiding force. She, because when her love connects to the love of the man, the guiding force is even stronger. There's no, there, there's no effort needed. You know what? My daughter came down here, so I think, I think that's my time for, to be ending this. You all understand what I'm saying, right? You are, listen, walk around loving. Don't walk around being angry. Don't walk around hating. You're going to tell your sister, I mean, your, say hi, aunties. Hi, aunties. Say auntie, her auntie Erica. And Auntie, Auntie Nadine. Okay. Say hi, Amina. Hi. Say hi, Dookie. Hi, Dookie. <laughs> Say hi, Kaiser. Hi, Kaiser. Say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Understand. I'm glad that you all understand, okay? I'm glad that you all get it. I'm glad. You, you saw a man in her? <laughs> I'm glad that you all get it because it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a difficult practice, but it's very simple. The concept is simple. Love is not, love is not that hard to understand. Love is not that hard to do. It's more harder to hate. Say hi, Ananabel. Hi, Ananabel. <laughs> it's harder to hate than to love. It's harder to be angry than to not. Because when you're angry, you gotta feel and you gotta act and you gotta do the stupid things and you gotta disconnect from God and the, from, 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 from the universe and create little stuff. No. I mean, well, you're not disconnected from the universe. You're always connected, but you are creating nonsense in your life. So love anyway. Love for no reason. Because the love is only yours and the love comes back to you. It's only you benefiting from it and everybody around you. So just stop loving. Your children deserve it. You know, give love so it comes back to your family. Break that generational curse. Give love because everything else forms diseases, forms pain, back pains, headaches, period pain, menstruation pain. You might as well just give love. And to be afraid to love is to not understand love. You all, I hope I spoke something today that, would, that, that made sense. Um, marriage super of the lamb. <laughs> say hi, say hi, Uncle Jerzim. Hi, Uncle Jerzim. Hi, Uncle Jerzim. <laughs> You're afraid to love. The ones who are afraid to love don't understand love. So you are, and many people, you can only be afraid of what you don't understand. You know, you, you understand, you only become afraid of what you don't understand. You can only be afraid and fear what you don't understand. So when you don't understand love, of course you're going to be fear, afraid of it because you have the wrong definition of love. You think love is just a thing. Love is everything. I'm the subconscious, but I know they love me, but are afraid even more because... He looked within. He looked. Might, might have to understand that one a little deeper. I don't think I get it. Fear and love. It's very hard to live in the same place, man. I needed this more than you know. 
just cry to God in my, wow, amazing, amazing. I love to hear those type of stuff. Love is a must. For so long I've loved him, but I don't feel love, and still, I, I still love him. You, you, you don't stop loving. You, you don't feel love. You, so remember, you can only feel your love. You can only experience your love. So you gotta love anyway, okay? You gotta love anyway. Baby, don't touch the mother. Hey, baby, go put your shoes on. Okay, go put your shoes on. You can only feel your love. You can only experience your love. But um, if you are not getting the respect back, if you are making, if, if someone else is causing you to feel your love less or feel annoyed and angry or feel negative emotions, sometimes you got to do the grown up thing because sometimes the right thing and the hardest thing is the same thing. Put your shoes on, mama. The right thing sometimes and the hardest thing, hey, Tanya, is the right, it, it, it is the same thing. We have to understand this. We have to get it. That's just how it is. The right thing. Hi, conscious. Hi. conscious. I've been in. I've been waiting in there for almost ten minutes. Conscious. My bad. That's 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 sad. I was just saying that. No, I was. Trying. Go ahead. Oh, now no. But what you're saying is just like, oh, uh, that's all I want to come up with. I just want to come up with. I just was gonna see how it came down. But what you're saying about the subconscious in the country, it's all about love. Like it's all about love. It's so true. It's facts. It's all love, man. So it's only love. Nothing else can exist. That that's just it's just one thing. That exists. <laughs> But yeah, man, listen, you're going to choose to love anyway, man. You are. Let's just practice this. Everywhere we go, everything we do, everyone that we see, send them love. See how you feel. Every person that you meet, send them a quiet, don't expect it back. Practice not expecting it back, okay? How you, ex how you practice not expecting it back is this right here. Don't say it out loud. See, everyone got to do something so everybody can see. If I open your door, I want you to tell me thank you. If I hold the door for you, I expect you to say thank you so much. And, 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 and when they don't, we get upset. If I let you cut in front of me in, in traffic, I want you to say thank you. And, and if you don't say thank you, I'm mad. Do things because of who you are. Don't do things because you want things back. Do it because of who you are. Because whatever you do based on love. Corinthians chapter 13 says, Though I, though I speak to a thousand languages of many tongues, and I don't have love. It cherishes me nothing. And though I give all my money to the poor. And if I don't do it from love. It benefits me nothing at all. So if it's not from love. It benefits you nothing. Do it because you love. So when you see someone. A stranger. A homeless person. A person you know. A friend. Whatever you see. You're walking. Somebody that you don't recognize. Give a silent word of love. I wish you love. I wish you peace. And see how you feel because I promise you it comes back. As a matter of fact, you feel it makes you feel instantly good. Just try it. Inbox me and let me know how you feel after you start giving love. I promise you, you will feel so amazing. You feel like Hercules. Because you're going to be like, you're expressing, you are doing what you are naturally supposed to do. You are doing the nature. You are doing your essence. Maybe be careful, okay? Anyways, let me get off here because my daughter is um, towards my ex. Yeah! Towards the ones who, no, baby, be careful. The people who we think that we de, who deserve it more. I mean, the the people that we think, no, baby, ah, baby, don't fall. The people that we think, Leah, baby, you can't ride a skateboard, okay? You, no, you know. I feel with one feet. Yeah, but you're gonna fall, and if you hurt yourself, it's gonna hurt. Okay. okay. So be so be careful, okay? Okay, I can do. I can press. Give me one second. Yeah. It's okay, you don't, need, you don't need a helmet because you're not going outside, okay? Oh, be careful. Okay. <laughs> hey, um, I forgot what I was saying, so I won't even continue. You all have a beautiful day. Thank you all for joining me. 
Thank you all for hearing me talk about love because I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself and you all lent me your ears. So I do appreciate you all lending me your ears because I needed to hear what I said because I wasn't, I was talking to myself. So I appreciate you all lending me your ears to hear me be crazy and talk to myself, okay? So I appreciate it. Uh, I love you all. Um, baby, be careful. Don't fall. Okay. Let me see something. Um, somebody want to say something? I don't know how to do this, you know. Somebody want to say something? Hey, Miss Cheryl. Go. Daddy Judy, yeah. See, I have a, I have a blanket. Hey, Miss Cherry. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and yourself? I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate um today's live. Okay. But with, with with me, I, I, I get I get what you're saying in terms of giving love, right? Mm -hmm. Um but with me the thing has been that every single time I've given love, um, not that I'm giving it to receive it like you said, I never receive it back. Right? Okay. So just yesterday, I was talking to my to my partner to say, um, I've been going through so much, and if it was converted that he is going through what I'm going through, obviously he knows for a fact that I'll be there for him, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know when you're in a relationship and you've given way too much that you end up losing yourself? Yeah. Because you want to see the other person... Um, always happy and you're willing to go that extra mile to make things work. Yep. Well, that didn't really work for me. Instead, um, I ended up not even realizing the person that I am anymore. Wait, say, say that again? Because I was... I'm saying that I ended up um, not realizing the person that I am anymore. Mm. So I've, I've, I've changed a lot to that to say to a certain degree, it even scares me. It even scares my sister, you know. And I, I would say I've never, I've put self care on pause uh, because being in a relationship with with a narcissist, then it's something on its own, you know. They, 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 they are never there emotionally. Um, they come first, basically. So now I have to, I'm in a phase where I'm dealing with depression, I'm dealing with anxiety, um, to such that a doctor would literally be like, I have never seen a 30-year-old who is so deep in them not being okay mentally that it even scares me as a professional. So let, I hear let, what you're saying. Let me, let me ask you a question, okay? Have you, have you ever thought about taking the love? Because, so right now, your love is not reciprocated. Um, many times when you are given love from a place of a physical place, from a physical place, from an attachment place, the reason why it's not being reciprocated and the reason why you become drained is because you are not given love from a place of God. Now, I'm not trying to give you advice, yeah. but understand what I'm saying. We give love from a physical place, so it's not a place of God. See, God... The, the universe, or what you, whatever you call God, it keeps replenishing love because it's coming directly from God. Now, when you look and become more physical and you expect that love from people, you don't get it back the same. You cannot get the love back from the same. Have you ever thought on taking the love that you are freely given to that person and give it to yourself? I realized that um, September on my birthday that I need to do that. Yeah, because we because you are giving love from a physical place. Seriously, you are giving love from a physical being. You, you're not giving love from a, mm -hmm. a spiritual place. Many times we disconnect from the spiritual father, from God. And what, and what we do, just because our relationships or the people that we choose to love don't line up with the holy love, that, that's not yeah. that conditional love. And we disconnect from God yeah. to make ourselves feel better to give our love to that person. 
So, hmm. so the love ain't coming back because now you are disconnected from the source itself. The source of love is God. That's the source of love. Amen. It's God. So when you are realizing that you are drained and you are, you know, then you, you don't recognize yourself, that's because you disconnect from God. So when you disconnect from God, the love stops because you're saying, God, I don't need your love. I rather my love from this being right here, from this man, because it's all in my physical nature. Mm -hmm. When you love from a physical place, the love is going to be drawn very quickly. It's going to be drained. When you love from a spiritual mm -hmm. place, the love always comes back because now the connection is always there. So the reason why we lose ourselves is because we lose the love from the connection with us and God. Only love makes you actually acknowledge and recognize yourself. God's love. That's what makes you recognize yourself. Mm -hmm. So when that's cut off, now I know you're looking for a, for a psychologically, uh, for a psychological answer or a relationship answer, but I'm telling you, sometimes mm -hmm. it's all about your love. When you disconnect from the Most High, your love cannot be, uh, your love cannot be, what's the word, recognized. It's gone. So now, hmm. it's up to you to connect back to that creator. Do you see yourself being far away from God? Have you, have you experienced yourself being far away from God and you don't even, you, you don't pray no more? There's no, you don't, you're not inspired no more? You are not feeling happy, no joyful, you're not grateful anymore? Do you, do you see yourself losing that? Um, funny enough, I do pray um, as much as possible. And funny enough, every single time that I would like, I usually light up a candle when I pray, especially when I'm feeling a bit down. The level of emotion that comes with it and the way I cry, basically, I always um, console myself to say that the Holy Spirit is there with me. You know, he sees and he, he realizes everything that is happening. So to be quite um, frank, I haven't really distanced myself from God. I, I Even with my partner, I do have days where I would recommend that let's pray together, you know. Rather than you pray on your own when you sleep or when I sleep, let's pray. Let me ask you a question. Let's go. Can we go a little deeper? Do you mind going deep? Yeah. No? Okay, good. Because I like going deep. Um, let, me ask, <laughs> let me ask you a question, right? Um, when you pray, what are you doing? Are you asking for something? Are you speaking? And, and when I, huh? Um, when I pray, usually first thing that I do, I thank God, mm -hmm. um, for life, for the family that I have. Two, I usually let Him know. I'm in my prayer. I'm usually direct with, with God because I feel like that is more genuinely important. So I don't just do a general prayer. I would indicate that, Father Lord, this is what I'm going through in detail. Um, please show me the way. Please show me the light. What am I supposed to do? What am I meant to do? What does this mean? What are you trying to show me in this relationship? Here, here, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. Here's the thing. No, we ask him those questions, but um, we know what he's showing you. or You know, you know what you're seeing, right? I mean, now let's be real. You know what you're seeing, right? You know what I know, seeing. and I'm scared to acknowledge it. Yes. That's the problem. You know what you are seeing, but you don't want to accept the truth. The truth, when you become yeah. the truth, and when you become love, or when you are love and connect to God's love, therefore, there's no fear of the truth. When you disconnect from God's love, there's a fear of the truth, because now the two frequencies are all from you. You know what you're seeing. You are afraid to accept it. That is the biggest problem. You don't want to accept it. Yes. So in, 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 in lieu of you accepting it, you will fight your reality and become drained. That's why you, I bet you are tired. I bet, I bet when you pray, you're asking for the same thing over and over again. When you are praying, praying is a time where you are coming to accept and receive, not to ask. Because the, the, the universe and God, whatever you believe in, sees and knows all. You don't have to say you're struggling. You don't have to say how much pain you have. You don't have to say how much sad you are. You are you, your frequency is already felt. Your frequency is out there. Prayer is a time where you come to in a relaxation time, a relaxation mode, a receiving mode, and to feel what you want to receive. 
You feel what you literally want to actually experience. That's what prayer really is. It's not a time to, God, pray with me. Uh, pray with me, boyfriend or girlfriend. God, let's, you know, I want this. That's not praying. That's asking for stuff. You creating your own stuff. Remember that because with your frequency, you are co-creating with the universe. Leah. Leah. Go tell my mom, okay? My bad, okay? My bad. My daughter. No. Um, but prayer, I think we see prayer as asking, asking. But if 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 the Bible says God already knows all your needs, the universe already He sees. I mean, if if you believe in, in the parts of the Bible that says even the hair on your head is numbered, if you understand that, then you know mm -hmm. your prayers is already answered. You're just not receiving it. So when you come to prayer, you're not receiving. You are in the giving mode. Prayer is a time where you meditate in a meditative state. Silent your mind because your mind is telling you something that you don't want to hear. You know, your mind is telling you the same thing over and over and over again. It's telling you what you feel. Silent your mind. Silent your heart. Sit and receive the truth. When you receive the truth, sister, the truth shall set you free. The reason why you're not free is because you are fighting and hiding from the truth. Because you're already seeing the, re the reality. But... You, you ask God, show me what you are showing me, but, but, but when God shows you, you want something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, want, you want something else. So I'm right, I'm right by, say, I'm right by um, saying, maybe this is God's way of saying um, it's time to let go. You don't need God to tell you. Where there is a depletion of love inside of you, it's time to let go. You don't need God to tell you anything. Listen, the human being, we are created in, in the image of God. Therefore, we are one. We are the same being. God is one. You know what? Um, when you understand yourself and how deep you really are connected to the universe and to God himself or itself or herself, whatever God is, you understand that there is no need to ask anything. Because your essence feels and knows everything already. Your intuition guides you to everything that you want to know. So... It's not where God don't have to tell you to leave or to stay. You, your unhappiness, your, your not peace, your, your place where you are feeling lonely and sad and burdensome. When you're in a place where you are feeling regretful and resentment, it is time. It has been time to leave. There's no message needed with words. Words cannot say, leave will not be as strong as a feel of alone or a feel of insecure mm -hmm. or a feel of sadness and feel of a feeling of guilt and a feel of resentment the word is not matching that frequency that frequency is destroying mm -hmm. you already do you have what's your favorite color let's let's <laughs> but what's your favorite color black black is perfect that made sense if black is your favorite color it's time to leave it's been time to leave trust me on that one if black is your wow. favorite color, it's time to your subconscious mind is fighting you. Do you have headaches? Do you do you get headaches? Always. You have headaches. Okay. Bam. Time to leave. Do you um do you trust? Would you trust anyone else? No. Time to leave. Done. No need to even conversation. No, no need to even continue the conversation. It's time to leave. Wow. <laughs> it's time. Because love inspires. Love is what inspires you. You can still love a person, but it's time to leave. Mm -hmm. That's going to be your draining force. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I said, the right things and the hardest thing is the same thing. But when you leave, when you connect back to the source, love comes back and love carries you. It's okay. You're going to miss them, but it's okay. Love is going to carry you through and see you through because love never ends. Relationship ends. It's okay. You got to understand that you got to be bold enough and brave enough to understand that whatever you lose in the name of love is going to be replaced in the name of love. I promise you. Amen. 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 <laughs> my mama is even saying, my mama is even saying, I say to her, um, maybe sometimes things don't really work out because God is trying to show you that where you are currently, I am not able to access any give you your blessings that's why you feel stagnant that's why you feel like i'm not there yeah. but 
remove yourself from that cloud Thanks. so that you will be able to be showered um, with blessings. So, Thanks. yeah. Facts. Facts. That's <laughs> so true. So, it's about you accepting that truth. And you remember, if you know the truth and the truth isn't setting you free, you, you're going to hope you're going to start having thyroid issues. You have thyroid issues? I no, not really thyroid issues, but abdominal pains. Yes. You what? Okay, perfect. Because whatever comes from the throat goes in your stomach, and it's connected. So a lot of times, when the truth will upset your stomach, literally. I'm mm. not sufficient for telling the truth because I know everything connects. I tell my clients all the time, everything connects. So if you are not accepting the truth and you're fighting the truth. Thyroid issues, weight issues, you're going to overeat sometimes, you have stomach cramps, you got stomach pain, you have stomach... There's reason, it's connected. You are fighting your reality. Every time you are fighting your reality, you are believing a lie. And when you are, when you are believing a lie, the energy of the lies will build in your body and create these diseases. So your stomach will be messed up. I think you answered your own yeah. question, like someone said. So let me ask, yeah. uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me bring someone else on. I think somebody else want to come on. Thank you, all for, thank you for coming, okay? Thank you so much. No problem. You have a good day. Let me bring someone else on. You too. All right. Doke! I should be more often. Hey, my brother. What's going on? Hey, all you nice people, loving, lovely people, people with love from the heart who are light and who are life itself. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings, man. Greetings. It's a pleasure. Namaste. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure to learn so much. Yeah. So much about, because once you become... Love, once you see, love cannot be lost, you know, it's already built in you, exactly. And if it's built in you, then it's that real and true love that will enlighten you to be light. And when you become light, then it makes the life itself lighter. Fine. So then, love is light, and light is life. <laughs> so, enjoy love. Enjoy. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you want to say? <laughs> That's all you have to say. Yo, it's true, man. It's that, that brother's fault. It's true. It is very simple. We just got to accept it. Love is what makes everything get even better. Let me get this one person. I have one more person in the box. That's what I'm talking about, man. He said what he had to say and then he's gone. I guess, I guess she left. Uh, the, the, the topic is love. But yeah, man, so... We just gotta love anyway, man. We we just gotta love anyway. Does does anyone else have anything else? Oh, any question? Any relationship question that they want? Real quick, I have one more question. If you have a question, come in the box. Come in the box for a couple of minutes. Let's talk about this right here, cause somebody wants to hear what you gotta say. So, somebody wanna hear your question, cause many of us, I <laughs> said that's it. Many of us have the same questions, but we are afraid to ask. And a lot of times, let me tell you this. Truthfully, um, how do you stay with someone who will not allow me to? Decorate the home. How do you stay with someone that would allow? That that's that that's a question about physical. That, that's that's a. I mean, why would why you gotta ask them a question? Why won't they want you to, to decorate the home? And why do you feel the need to decorate your home so much? So you gotta see from both sides. I think that's a question. That's a that's a very different question that I was expecting, but I don't I don't think that's a issue of divorce. I think that's an issue of just somebody have a different thought than you. You know, <laughs> I don't think that's nothing to do with love. I think that's just a different opinion. I don't think that's, you know, like they show you they love you and they tell you and you still can't feel it. The reason, why, you know, a lot of times the reason why we can't feel their love is because we don't feel ours. I don't know, it sounds weird. A lot of times the reason why we don't feel their love is that because we don't feel ours. Now, how many of us right now, be honest, right? How many of us right now with control issues? Sounds like it too. How many of us right now? Raise your hand. I want to see your hand raises. How many of us have so many walls around our hearts? How many of us right now have so many walls up 
that we are so afraid. We have issues with trust. We have issues with um, thinking that somebody's going to be there for you. We have issues with, with love. We have issues with receiving love. How many of us have those issues? Right. A lot of us, right? A lot of us have those, those issues. So now, here's the problem. Flojo, you're still the head near love. I love my people. You see what I'm saying? So, here, so here's the thing. When you have issues, the first thing that you do, nature, n- nature is such a beautiful thing. Nature, naturally, you want to protect yourself. So when you have fear, when you see, uh, when you see any form of threat, okay, nature, hey Cornelia, nature says, let me protect myself. So I build up walls and I build up all these things so that I don't have to feel this feeling anymore. When you build up walls around your heart, the love is not protruding from your walls. And the love is not coming through from others from your wall. So hear what I'm saying. Sometimes if you cannot feel love, it's because your heart is blocked and it's closed up. So no matter if God is giving you love, because God is love and God is giving you love. If you can't feel love, if you can't feel love, it's the issue is you blocking it. The issue is you, fear closes the heart, facts. The issue is that you black in this love. So now you got to let down your wall, go and stop being afraid to get hurt because love, you have to be vulnerable. To experience the highest level of love, you have to be the highest level of vulnerable. Many of you are afraid to be vulnerable. You are so afraid to be vulnerable. You are so afraid. You are afraid of being hurt. You can't, you can't be afraid of death and live, in a, live a prosperous, beautiful life. You can't, you can't afraid of being um, you can't want to be rich and be afraid to gamble a little bit, invest. So I'm saying you have to tear those walls down. It's ugly too. Oh my God, it's scary. It looks like the end of the world is nigh when you tear those walls down because now you feel naked. But you were born naked. See, the nakedness that you feel is you being here. Being you know how good it is to be naked? You ain't got to hide. You know how good it is. You see, I was reading this book, Veronica Desires to Die. And she realized that when she becomes and accepts that she is crazy, is when she stops caring about what any else one, anyone else think. She begins to be true to herself, live her nature, live her truth, be free. Because she don't care what you think, he thinks. See, when you are naked, it's like, you see me, this is it. I have no need to hide anything. We are afraid to be naked. We are afraid to be vulnerable. How can you love when you, listen, love. You got to love. You got, you got to love. It frees you. Exactly. It frees you. Love is the essence. Love frees you. Many times we're in a relationship and we're not free. If we're in a relationship where we're not free, then it's not love. Love is not present. Like the person who we're just talking to. If you're in a relationship where love is not there, that means, I mean, if you're not free, love is not there. Love should make you be free. And if you can't feel people's love and you can't feel love, a lot of times you have the issue came across your life today. I really needed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you came too. I'm glad you came too. But seriously, if you can't feel love, it's because a lot of times, so a lot of issues is with, you could, you see, a lot of times women lose themselves because they give all their love to a man. I don't know if that's possible, but you give all this love to the, you give all the physical love. You give them the attention. You cook. You clean. You show them. You spend money on them. We hang out. We have good, passionate sex. The physical things, right? The physical things. We do all. And when you give for those things after a while, because it becomes physical and to their physical, and the physical don't really return to you back what you can give it. Because the physical is just a dense matter. The physical is just dense matter, right? Dense energy. And when you come from a physical place, you can't really feel that much love. But when you become more spiritual and connected to God, listen, you can pick up on anyone. You can pick up on anything. Because you're connected. Understand this. When you are connected, the reason why you got to be connected, the reason why connection is the greatest, when you're on a certain frequency, you pick up on anything in this world, in this universe. So now that I'm on the highest frequency, everything that's love, I feel. Everything that's not love, I feel. Everything that's love, I feel. I feel everything. I recognize everything because I feel that pull. I feel that drain. I feel being tired. I feel being sick. I feel being, uh, I feel, uh, I feel, no, I feel, don't do it. I feel, do it. I feel, yes. 
I feel that's the one. I feel that's not the one. I feel everything because if we are all the same energy, because we are all the, we are all one, and I tap into that energy, what I feel cannot be a lie. What I feel must be the truth. And if I accept what I feel, then what I feel must set me free. Because if I expect that to increase me and I stay, I have issues. My life should be life. Look at the birds. Look at the bees. Look at, look at the butterflies. See how free they are? They're not tied down to anything that doesn't give them life. There was once a caterpillar. The caterpillar, this covering, this thing kept it down with the low ants and the beetles. And if butterfly says, I am done being this butter, I am done being this caterpillar. It's time to fly. I'm free. And when he becomes free, he accepts who he really is. He accepts his truth. I have wings. I might be able to use them for the first couple of days, but these wings are here. I have to learn to use my wings. Therefore, I must stop thinking and seeing myself as the past life. I have to stop seeing myself as hurt. I have to stop seeing myself as a caterpillar only crawling. I have to remove that version of myself from my mind. So when I fly, I am not afraid to crash. If I'm afraid to crash, I will be afraid to fly. This is what you gotta do. You've been hurt, yes. And you've been abused, yes. And you've been disrespected, yes. And you're being left with children, yes. And you're being, you're being a whole bunch of situations that you don't like. But you have to forget that part in your life. Learn the lesson that you need to learn. You ain't got to keep it in your mind all the day. You ain't got to keep reliving it over and over and over again. It's a choice. You ain't got to keep expressing it and speaking about it all the damn time. Every time you speak about relationship, what comes out of your mouth is negativity, is men in this, women in this. Every time you speak of it, it grows. You ain't got to, you, you ain't got to keep going over it. You have a choice in going over it or not going over it. But the butterfly, he don't even remember being a damn caterpillar because his whole consciousness changed. The entire consciousness changed. And every time he remembers, every time he remembers that he's a caterpillar, he just dropped to the ground. Bam! Because the feel of that dense matter with no wings, it overtakes him and he drops. Bam! He forgets for a minute who he was. Can't be afraid to go in an unknown place at an unknown time. See, nobody want to be in an unknown place. Everybody want to be in the unknown. Everybody want to be in the known place. The route sharpens you. Facts. It does, it, the un, especially the unknown route, it sharpens you. When you're in an unknown place, I was talking to one of my clients yesterday. And my client was telling me, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about her business. My client was telling me that, you know, she's just out there living free and stuff. And because she don't know what it's going to be. And I'm like, man, you are blessed. Facts. I'm like, you, I said, that's the way to be. That's the way to be. Because now you're not accepting any, any specific beliefs. I said, this is the way to be. Don't think that, see, everyone else want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's not fun. I don't want to know when I'm going to die. I don't want to know when, when, when I'm going to get sick. I don't want, surprise me. I'm going to surprise me. Let me have a surprise, surprise in my face. Oh my God. A known place is like, ooh. I am free to create whatever I want because now, since it's unknown, I have to depend on me and the creator even more. I have to depend on me and the creator. But I know, I know for a fact of one thing. What is out there is a lot better than what is behind me. What is out there is love. Janice, what, Janice, what's good? What is out there is love. What is behind me is a bunch of crap that we experience that we don't like. Take love and form it into anything that you want.
create from it. Create shelter. Create your relationship from it. Create hope from it. Create your beliefs and your understanding from it. But create from that unknown place. Don't create from the known place. Because from a known place, your creation is already determined. It's boring. It's boring. It is boring to be the known. Everybody want to know everything. What do you want to know? Or believe. Just be okay in not knowing. And just create new things every day. Be okay with being one with life. Life. What do you know about life? Nothing. You don't know anything about life. So what do you want to control it for? We want to control life. No, let's let life, let life live. Let life, let life be. You are so quiet. Why am I only getting like one comment at a time? What's going on? My comment was streaming and now we just stopped. What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? You are kind of quiet. Where everybody at? Oh, <laughs> uh, you are in thoughts? <laughs> hey, Renetta, how are you? <laughs> You're like, oh, it was... Was it buffering? Oh, he paused? Oh, man. I didn't know he was pausing. My bad. I hope it's good now. Soaking up on my... In shock? What are you in shock about, um, Khadija? <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, man. Just... We are... Every, everyone is afraid of the unknown. Free yourself. Everyone is afraid of the unknown. Everyone is afraid of the unknown. The, the unknown scares the heck out of you. But the unknown is the only place that frees you. The unknown... Have you ever went? Have you ever wondered if you just take off, how life is gonna be? It's gonna be you're gonna disconnect from what you know. What you know is already what you know. There's nothing new coming from what you know. Nothing new comes from what you already seen. All you could see the same thing over and over again. But the unknown place, oh, unknown relationships, the unknown love, the unknown respect, the unknown next relationship, the unknown. Children that you might have, the unknown job, the unknown places that you're going to go, the unknown people that you're going to meet, your unknown journey is the best journey because you have time to create it every single step of the way. Don't be afraid, man. Don't, don't, <laughs> is everyone, is, <laughs> don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to leave. Don't be afraid to leave your partner because you stuck, you don't, don't think that you're stuck. And when somebody leaves you, it's okay. Thank them for expressing love. Hey, you showed me what love was. Not by you doing it, by me doing it. Hear what I just said? When they leave, thank them for showing me love. Not like you showed me love. I show, You showed me that I could love. Sometimes people come in your life to remind you that you are able and capable to love. That's it. Not to get it back. Not to be in a relationship. A long-term relationship. Some people come to remind you. Your angels send people to remind you. I know this is gonna. I want you to focus on your love. Uh, she needs. She needs to express or feel, or he needs to feel or experience his own love. So I'm gonna send an angel disguised in pain or whatever else. I'm gonna send an angel disguised in suffering so that she could love the mess out of him. Cause that's the only way she will learn. Cause that's exactly where she is right now. Sometimes people come in your life. A lot of women tell me, Kirk, I can't find, a lot of my friends, female friends tell me, Kirk, why can't I find a conscious man? And I'm like, what do you think I am? She said, but no, but you're not with me. Sometimes people that you find or that you express love with or that you find to be conscious or the, the ones that you find to be, it's not for you to be with sexually. You don't have to be with everything sexually. We just want to spread sex. Like we just want to just, ugh. like this is all we have. Like we, this is not who we are. We, we don't, we don't have, it don't have to be sex. You telling me that you can't meet somebody who is conscious. You met me. We talk every day. You just met me. I am conscious. I am very high frequency. So therefore, sometimes life shows you that you are able to connect with a high frequency person. It doesn't have to be sexually. Why does it always have to be sex? Why does it all have to be an exchange of intimacy? 
Why does it always have to be an exchange of some type of relationship that's going to end bad? Why can't you accept me for the conscious one that you have just experienced? I'm conscious. I'm a high frequency. You connect with me. So therefore, you are able to meet that man. I am it. Just remember, you are able. Don't doubt yourself now. You just met me. I'm not saying I'm anything special. But I'm saying sometimes not everything comes to you the way how you want it, but it comes to you. We just we just have we just have this 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 idea that everything is ours. It's like children. Have you I see my daughter play with everything she touch becomes hers. She tells my son, that's mine. Don't touch it. It's not yours, it's daddy's, but I allow you to play with it. Lord, I just ah oh, Jesus. Hmm. I just, did you all just got that? Did you all just got that? Did you all just get that? Hey, Crow, I'm, you, I'm something special. Did you all just get that? Yes, mama, here you go, here, blanket. Did you all just get that? My daughter. My daughter said, it's mine, don't touch it. My son is like, but that's not yours, it's daddy's. And daddy says, hey, it's not yours. I just let you, I allow you to play with it for a while. Don't become attached to it. Don't become attached to it. Don't lose yourself in it. Don't. Don't become attached to it. You don't need to. It's not yours. So we enter this relationship. You, you meet a guy who is nice and kind and loving. You want him to be yours. And, and if you want that, if he's not yours, you begin to suffer. You begin to suffer. You begin to hate and question your worth and your self. This is not mine. Nothing belongs to you. Stop suffering. I'm not one of those guys who speak relationship in a way that you think that, you know, people these days talk in relationship. I'm, I don't talk about relationship really. I don't talk about that. I'm talking about you becoming one with yourself. I could care less about your relationship. I don't care. Kirk, are you, a, are you a relationship coach? I'm not a relationship coach. I don't coach about, I coach about love. And if you have understanding about love and energy, you understand it works the same way financially, and romantically, and physically. It works the same way everything. I don't have to be a relationship coach to understand how those things work. It's the same concept. Energy is energy. It's the same thing. So everybody keep asking me, Kirk, relationship. I don't, I'm not talking about relationship. I'm talking about ownership. You only own you, and you don't even own yourself. Sometimes the people that we want to keep in our life ain't for us to keep. It's not for us to keep. Free yourself with a truth. The truth is, when something is, when things are, when a baby is, when, it, when, when a child is time, is ready to come out, that child will create, or the situation will create pain. When a man or woman is in your life who is ready to go, that person, or that situation will create pain. See, the baby don't really feel the pain when the baby is coming out. I'm on today. I don't know where it's coming from. The baby don't feel the pain. Sometimes the people who are leaving, who are coming out, don't feel the pain. It's the people who are holding on. <laughs> it's the people who are being delivered from. <laughs> it's who feeling the pain. But I understand when the pain, I understand when with the pain, you have to allow things to go free. When it's when somebody is ready to, when someone is ready to leave your life, the pain. When you start seeing the pain, it's time to realize the pain is never ending. I can't be in this pain forever. I can't stay forever. I can't, I can't, I can't be in this pain because this pain causes more pain. See, these pain triggers more pains. I had enough. When I start to lose myself in this pain, I know the pain becomes unhealthy. See, it's not all pain is unhealthy. See, all pain are necessary, but not all pain Am I a philosopher? <laughs> oh my lord! Crow, 
on. This what you be talking about? Because I'm, I'm hearing myself talk, and I'm like, man, I'm saying some deep stuff. Because I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. I, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm just having a conversation with myself. I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> I'm telling you. Not all pains are healthy. Because when you get those unneeded pain, unwanted pain, you're just building pain upon pain upon pain to teach you the same lesson that it started with. Man. You're going to be able to say, hey, okay, I'll let you go. Because you can only have one. But choose, but you can't carry a baby for 10 years. You can only carry it for nine months, eight months, and seven months. Sometimes it even comes early because it's ready. You can only carry it for so long. But you have to, yeah. But you have to be ready to give, just let it go. I know it feels good and you feel like a mother. You feel pregnant, you're glowing, you're feeling beautiful. <sighs> but when it comes, when it's time to come, let it come. Life should not be stagnant. A little longer, huh? <laughs> life should not stay stagnant. When life remains the same, you you remain the same. A oh, lot. That's scary. And life never remains the same. So when you say life is the same, that means you you are believing a lie because life is not the same. Sometimes you try to fight the changes of life. Life does not stay the same. I'm talking into it. <laughs> life don't stay the same because a life has to be born. Life, keep, listen, life has to keep recreating itself. So when it's time for that person to leave your life, you have to accept the fact that life has to move on. And that man or that woman is life. And that life has to move on. Your life that you are has to continue also. And if it goes in two different frequencies or two different directions, allow yourself to accept the fact that I Needed you then for something. But life is showing me right now. I need something else. <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> uh, listen, I needed him or her to teach me that lesson. Now the lesson is done. I have to see what am I learning and move on to the next lesson because if that is going, life is telling me I no longer have a need for that. Now I need this. You have to be able to accept what is. Stop trying to accept what was. Because what was will keep you back there. Time to start loving you. And here's the, here's the thing. Khadija, you should have never stopped loving you. Never stop loving you. Actually, when you stop loving you, you can't love anything else. Because here's the thing about love. One last thing, I promise you this time. When you stop loving you, you can't love anything else. Let me, let me tell you why. When you, see, you think, you think that you was loving, but you don't need, you wasn't loving, you was receiving. You was attached. If you don't have love for you, you can't have love for anything else because you don't, you, you don't understand anything else. So if you stop loving yourself, what you was doing wasn't love. What you was doing, you was attached. You needed that love from that person to make you fill the gap for the lack of love that you had. Understand this. If you don't have it within, how can you give it? You can't, it's impossible. If you have it within, it will spill over on you. Therefore, you will abide by the same rules of love. You will understand love. If you had love, and I want you to understand this, if you had love within, you will keep, hey, Sean Smith, how are you doing? I didn't know you was there. I, I, I have my glasses on. Somewhere on the floor. If you have love, that love, ah, that love 
What make you feel? Uh, oh my! Oh gosh! That's what I love myself. Oh, hallelujah! If you didn't have love, you attached to something else to give you what you lack. That's why when they leave, I lost myself. I don't understand. I am so angry. I am so disturbed. I'm depressed. I'm anxious. I'm frustrated. I'm so drained and tired because your source of love left. If you take on someone or something, <laughs> for, so lost, right? If you take on something or someone as your source of love, that someone is temporary. That someone ain't promise. That someone is a physical being. Can't give you that type of love. The only love comes from the source itself. So you have to connect to the source. And people will come and go, and the love will stay because the source is eternal. People, physical beings, ain't. So when they go, what are you? How what? How are you? What are you, what are you asking, Ellie? Um, Kay? How what? Be more specific, because I'll be saying so much stuff. By the time you, I see the question comes up, it's kind of gone. Brandon, what's good, man? How are you doing, bro? Hey, Brandon, this is for you too, man. This is for you too. This is for men and women. Love, man. You got to forget what happened in the past and love. Sometimes you have to overcome it with love. Sometimes you have to avoid the triggers that what triggers you in feeling those feelings or, or having those thoughts. You have to see what triggers you and get rid of it. How do you connect to the source? You connect to the source by surrendering to the source. You connect to the source by first acknowledging the source because you're going to know what you're connected to. Acknowledging the source and acknowledging yourself. You have to, you, so for you to connect to the source, you have to, somebody said, who said, when I looked for myself, I found God. And when I looked for God, I found myself. When you look for God, you'll find yourself. And when you look for yourself, you'll find God. Look for yourself. Look, seek yourself. And to seek yourself, Disconnect from the past. Dis disconnect from the past. Disconnect from your pain. Disconnect from your source of pain. Disconnect from your source of anger. Disconnect from everything that brings you down. Disconnect from that. Then when you find your true self under all the pain and the hurt, you will find God. Because God is going to be like, I never left. They didn't hear me? <laughs> Seriously, you have to disconnect and you have to be brave enough to, to disconnect. Exactly. My husband, my husband passed away recently. This let me see happiness is within me. Your husband passed away because you realize that just because a physical being passed away is a spiritual part that you love. The physical part with part, yes, ex exactly. And plus, you connected to love regardless. Love don't stop after death. Love continues. Love don't stop. If love, don't you still love your grandmother and your great grandmother? Don't we still love them? Do we stop loving them because they passed on? No, we don't stop loving them because of the past. Don't we love our ancestors? Don't we love our great, great, great grandmother? Our great grandmother? Our great grandfather? Don't we still love them? Because energy don't die. The physical being die. This connect can be hard, but well, it is very worth it. It is very worth it. But love never stops. You could disconnect, but love. Just don't try to be attached physically. Don't try to sleep with them. You don't have to sleep with anyone that you love. Everybody, I love you, but you don't want to sleep with me. Listen, what I got to do with love? That's just a whole different entity. That's a whole different energy. A whole different... Just because I say I love you don't mean that I want to be with you in a relationship. See what I'm saying? What makes us hold on to the pain? Because the body, the, the human body of what you think that you carry in your guilt... A lot of times we have so much guilt within that we hold on to the pain because we think that we deserve it. 
We hold on to the pain because we feel like we deserve it. So we hold on to the pain because we carry too much guilt because we're punishing ourselves. Once you're punishing yourself for holding on to something that you allowed or you did or you should have not done, you're punishing yourself because now you don't want to let go of the fact. So a lot of times, <laughs> hey, thanks, brother. Um, you think that you deserve... Listen, if your child... If your child comes home... And let's look at this. Film. If your child comes home and he did something bad in school... And when he comes home, you, you're like, you did what? Come here. You don't think that he deserves some type of punishment? You, you think that. The human eyes has a lot of judgment in it. The human eyes have so much judgment. We see everything from a judgment. And with judgment comes punishment. There is no judgment without punishment. If there is judgment, there must be a punishment. There must be some form of punishment. When you can stop looking from the eyes of judgment, then you won't feel like you deserve any punishment. We look at ourselves if we mess up, if we allow something. We look at ourselves as, and judge ourselves. We are always judging ourselves. How we should act, what we should have done instead, what we should do, how we should look, how we should feel, how we should think. And we look at ourselves as, a, as from a judgment. And if we don't meet our own expectation of what we should do, what we should feel, what we should think, what we should be acting, how we should be doing dressing, how we should live, how we should where, where we should be at this age, where we should be at this time, where what, what we should have at this age, the house we should have, when we stop looking at that place from that place. There's no punishment. But when we look from that place, punishment, because we have guilt, we have feelings. So punishment finds its way. And you know what we do? Even deeper. What we do is that we won't punish ourselves. We will find someone. To punish us. So we look for relationship. And when we can't find a relationship, we look for food. That was over somebody's head. You will find a way to punish yourself because you judge yourself and you have found yourself guilty. And when you have found yourself guilty, the sentence has to come. There's no one who is guilty that's running around free. Not even yourself in your world, in your rule that you created in your world. You can't be free. Ain't that something? Our own rules is entrapped. Our, our own rules have entrapped us. <laughs> you know, you all should pay me for this. You all should pay me for this. You all should be paying me right now for this information. Send a free. This is, this is years and years of information and knowledge and wisdom. And I'm not bragging you. But I'm telling you. I did it again. <laughs> so you punish yourself. You punish yourself because you think that you deserve it. Ain't that something? Ain't, ain't, ain't that something? Write a book. <laughs> Found a new relationship and I am punishing myself for pain in the past. We, we do that. Self-condemnation, religion to our mindset. We do that. Self-condemnation. Let me tell you. We punish ourselves. We punish ourselves because... The, what we did to our first child wasn't what we're doing to our second child, so we, we feel embarrassed, we feel insecure. No, don't punish yourself. It's okay. Release those things. Light and love. I, I'll take it. I'll take your light and love. I'll take it. <laughs> Write a book. Hey, Tia, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. So let's stop punishing ourselves. And stop looking from a place of judgment. Just, just look at yourself and say, okay, this is it. Okay, I did it. This is it. Okay, I do it. This is it. Okay, I, I, I've experienced this. This is it. Okay, I have allowed myself because I knew better to do it. Okay, I did. Okay, so what? I did it. You don't look at your son or your daughter like that. You don't look at them and say, son, you did something five days ago and I'm going to spank you every single day because you deserve punishment every single day of your life for that one thing that you did. No, oh, you, you, you love them. And you say, I'm going to Chastise you with my words sometimes. Uh, I might spank you a little bit, but come here. I love you. I love you. Come here. Come here. Bring it in. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here, boy. Come here. Daddy loves you. Don't forget that. Come here. And they're like, thank you. 
Because now they are lifted from the burden. Your burden that you set is bringing you down. Forgive and let go. <laughs> thank you, Mo Soon. Uh, sa- th- thank you, Samuel. <laughs> Listen, so don't be carrying no more, no, no more pain around acting like that's all your option. Don't be carrying no hate around talking like that's your option. Eric, oh, I thought my sister was there. What makes us resort to this self sabotage mentality? Your, um, how you were raised? Um, let me tell you. Facts too. Facts. Um, be not stop punishing others for what you have done. Let me tell you. Okay, Erica, I, I see you coming to the wild. So the biggest, the, the, the biggest. Somebody asks. I'm gonna, uh, this is my last question, uh, uh, and I'm done. What makes us resort to this self sabotaging mentality by domest- being domesticated? Oh, Sean Smith is today. I release all pain. That's right. You they don't do you any good. They just make you sick. The reason why we self sabotage is because of something called domestication. Domestication. Hear this right here. This is what I'm going to talk about children. Son, if you don't eat all your food, you are a bad boy. You are a bad boy. My son gets up, he have full, daddy, I'm full. No, eat it all. Eat it all. You are a bad boy. People in Africa are starving. He takes that into his subconscious. He becomes an adult. He eats his food. He's full. If I don't eat all this food, I'm a bad boy. But I'm so full. Let me just eat it anyways. So I gain weight by my own form of, I begin to domesticate myself. I now become the domesticator. And then when I have children, I domesticate them that way. See, we learn behaviors. What's up, Yami? Hey, Miss Wilson, how you doing? The Jamaican star. We learn behaviors that we ourselves have taken on, even though we know it ain't right. But we are so uh, in them that we believe them. We domesticate ourselves. See, first, our parents domesticated us. So we have taken the lesson from our parents, and now we domesticate ourselves. With the same thing. So we sabotage ourselves. We sabotage our bodies with the same food that our parents told us. If you don't eat your food, you're not a good boy. You're a bad boy. People in Africa are starving. You become guilty carrying that. So you have to overeat. <laughs> and I'm, that's just one example. Sunshine lady, what's good? So now we are domesticating ourselves because now we are bringing pain and suffering to ourselves because we believe that if we are not living by our own rules, we must be punished. Be compared to other children. I'm t- Don't that make sense? People, that's my last question. I have to go. I hope you have a beautiful day. Seriously. I hope you have a beautiful life and a beautiful afternoon. I didn't want to talk so long. I think I've been talking for like three hours now. Lord, y'all got me talking. Y'all got me talking for hours. How, how do you all have me talking for this long? I think that's, I think that's disrespectful. You all have me talking, asking me questions, and you all know I got to go. I want to read this again. Can I read this one more time? My, my writing in the gym last night? Oh, probably wasn't, it wasn't really. Never mind. You all have a beautiful day. Nani, I know you were still here. You all have a beautiful day, all right? I'm gone. I'm out. Thank you all for the gifts. Thank you all for your ears. Thank you all for listening. You need to be treated as such. That's facts. Now is the time for the appreciation. Erica, you said, oh, you ask, oh, read, oh, read it again? <laughs> so I'm coming from a place of love. I was read, I'm writing this because I was in a place um, in my mind where there was love. I see you, and I'm talking to you, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to each one of you all. I see you through me, through my heart of love and understanding and peace and kindness and hope and faith 
and patience. I see you through love. I see you through me. When I see you, I can only see me. When I see beauty in you, it's because I am beautiful. And when I treat you with kindness, it's because I live with kindness in my heart. I see you through the eyes of love and understanding. I know the pain I've been through, so I understand yours. I know I have struggled with my emotions and my inner demons, so I'm aware of mine when yours are active towards me. I understand you. What I'm trying to say is that I love you. I use no judgment towards you because I am you and you are me. And I just now recognize that. That's why I can love you so easily without you doing anything. I can love you because of my love. It is freeing. It is eternal. It is me. And all I have to give is me. That's my word to you that I'm leaving you with. For some reason, I wrote this, and I, I, as I read it, I felt this just now. I just felt this as deep as I ever felt anything. I don't, maybe because I wrote it. I don't know. Thank you all. You all have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful evening. Have love. God, you're almost good. Have love. Have peace. Be with one. Be with you. May love, may, may love be with you. Namaste, may the God in me bow down to the God in you and who always recognize the God in you. May I always recognize the God in you so I give you the love and the respect that you deserve. May everyone see the God in you who you meet on your journey so that they can recognize the true beauty that you possess. The love in me recognize the love in you. Namaste. Love you, sister. Love you. Love you, Nadine. Love you, Erica. Love you, folks. I'm out.